Hey everyone, this is Cody, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the ZWO ASI Air operating system to control the Celestron CGX, CGXL, Advanced VX, and CGEM2 mounts. The process is basically the same for all of them. Now, I'm making this video because it's been requested by dozens of people that have had problems getting these two systems to communicate. And really, I've perfected this process. It's taken me two years. The scientist in me, I've uh, actually wrote down my procedure the last couple of years, what's worked, what hasn't, and basically fine-tune this to get it exactly where I want it. So I'm going to show you my procedure today on how to do this, uh, basically from step one. So I'm going to show you how to align everything. We're going to do auto-guiding, auto-focusing, polar alignment, plate solving, and then do the, uh, the actual image acquisition. Now I'd highly recommend keeping a log when you do play around with things because it's really nice to see what worked for you and what didn't and come back and fix the problems that you had. It's also really nice if you take like a three month break, you can come back and say, oh, this is my procedure, go right through the motions and boom, you're up and running again. Whereas if you take a three month break, you might forget what you're doing. So having a procedure really helps. I highly recommend doing this. Now before we get started, I just want to say that the beginning is probably the most important part in this entire process. It's to make sure you follow these steps that I give you exactly at the beginning. Once you're in the ASIR Pro, you can kind of change things up the way you want it, but the beginning and getting everything set up and turned on and getting going, that's the real important step. So let's go ahead and, and get to this. This might be a, a long video, but it should have everything you need to know about using the ZWO ASIR operating system with the Celestron CGX or those other corresponding mounts. So the first thing you'll wanna do is get just a standard USB to mini B cable. Uh, I get a long one because my ASIR Pro is on my telescope, but if yours is on your mount, uh, you, can, you can use a, a short one. Now that being said, I'm gonna just go ahead and, and plug this into the ASIR Pro. Now it's really important that once you've attached the USB cable, the mount is off and the ASIR Pro is off. You don't want either of them on right now. Okay, so with the ASIR Pro turned off, we're now ready to set the switch position. So I'm just gonna hit enter and hit enter again. And let that set. Okay, so now that the switch position is set, I'm going to turn the mount back off. Now the process on the Advanced VX or the CGM2 is basically identical to the CGX except for one step, and that is instead of setting a switch position, you're setting the mount to the index mark. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then lock those down. And that is the only step that is different. So from here on out, everything is the same, no matter which one of the four mounts that you're using. Okay, so at this point, the ASI Air Pro is still turned off as well as the mount. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the mount on, let it load up and just get it to that first screen. Okay, so right there, we're gonna leave that there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my ASI Air Pro and let it load up and then I'm going to connect with it on the Wi-Fi. All right, so now you'll see if I hit enter, it's gonna set the switch position, and then it's going to automatically input that information from the Air Pro. If you don't follow these steps, you'll have to enter the time and date like normal. This is downloading it, the exact coordinates, everything right in your hand controller, which is really nice. So now I'm gonna hit enter, and then you can kind of pick what alignment style you want to do. You can hit quick align, use last align, one star align. It doesn't matter because we're going to plate solve, but you need some kind of alignment for the ASI Air Pro to work. So I'm just going to do a one star alignment just for the sake of showing you. But guess what? I'm not even going to align it. I'm just going to send my telescope over to the nearest star. I'm going to hit align and I'm not even going to worry about it. So here we go. Okay, we'll go with Vega. All right, so I'm probably nowhere even close to Vega, but I'm just gonna hit enter and align and pretend that I did it. Because again, we're gonna plate solve, so it doesn't really matter. And then I'm gonna go back to the home position so that I can do a polar alignment. Now to go back home, I'm just gonna tap on menu. I'm gonna scroll down 
to Utilities and hit Enter. And then I'm going to scroll down to Home Position and hit Enter. So then we're going to go back to Home in preparation to pull our line through the ASI Air Pro app. Alright, so we are now in the home position. We're ready to do a autofocus and polar alignment. And basically everything from here on out is going to be in the tablet. So you can see the initial setup. There's quite a few steps. It took me a while to nail that procedure down. But once you do, it's pretty much the same every time and gives me the best results. So if you have an advanced VX, CGX, CGM2, CGXL, this procedure works out really nice. So yeah, the most complicated part is over now. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to need to do is check our main camera settings and make sure everything looks good there. So we'll go ahead and tap on that. And uh, gain is 111 for the 183 MC Pro. That looks good. We'll set our cooling to negative 20 tonight because I'm pretty sure I can get, I can get down that far. It's going to be pretty cold. So then we'll go ahead and move over to our guide camera settings and make sure everything looks good there before we look at our mount settings. So just tap the, the mount or the telescope settings. You'll see everything looks connected, everything looks good here, and you can change things how you want them. So you have options to control your meridian flip settings and other settings, and, and you can play with those how you want. All right, so now we're gonna click on the preview button and go over to the focus tab. And I'm gonna use half a second exposures for the RASA just because it's a fast telescope. Now, I like to use the ZWO autofocuser because it gets me that nice crisp focus. If you don't, you can just focus here. Um, but one thing you need to be aware of is the autofocuser is not an end-all solution. You need to have some stars in the field of view and in focus, uh, relatively in focus, before you use the autofocuser. Otherwise, um, it's not going to work. It, it basically it can't do the whole focusing routine for you. So as long as you are close to focus, it will work just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and hit autofocus here. Uh, one second exposures. I'll hit uh, play and it will find a focus star and it will generate a v-curve, find the best results of that, and then find the focus point. It's actually really quick. It usually takes about 60 to 90 seconds for me. All right, so it just finished the v-curve and now it's going to find that focus point that's right in the middle on both sides of the focus. All right, and it's done just like that. Autofocus succeeded. So now if I exit out of here, it's time to pull our line. All right, so to start, we're just gonna tap the play button. It's going to take an image, plate solve everything, tell you your chip size, your field of view, um, and then you just tap next when that's done. And it's gonna go ahead and rotate your RA axis 60 degrees for you. And that's because your mount is connected. So here it goes right now. Okay, it's going to plate solve again. All right, so with the RA axis now rotated 60 degrees, I'm gonna go ahead and pull our line here, get that done, and then pretty much we're off to the races after that. All right, so I'm gonna tap let's go, and at the bottom right, I'm gonna hit auto, so it auto refreshes after I make an adjustment. And then I like to just put my iPad on the ground and stare at it as I do this. few big adjustments here. See how that takes us. Now I'm actually so off, far off here that I'm actually going to pick up my mount and move it. But I did this intentionally to show you that it's okay to do this even if your mount's aligned because we're still going to plate solve after. So I'm just going to pick everything up and shift it over. Now we'll see what difference that makes. Ah, see, a big difference, two whole degrees. 
Okay, so I'm at basically nine arc seconds away in elevation and one arc, <laughs> one arc second away in azimuth. So I'm going to hit finish here and call that good. And now we're going to go to the preview tab. We'll slew to our target and, uh, and then plate solve. And what we're going to do is I want to shoot the kind of the core of the heart nebula tonight. So we're going to go over to IC uh, 1805. So I'm going to hit IC objects here. Hit search and we'll type in 1805. Okay, there we go. Tap on that and then hit the green go to button. And now my mount is going to slew over there and it's going to do a plate solve and center itself. So even though I picked up my mount, I physically picked it up and changed the alignment during my polar, polar alignment, doesn't even matter. The telescope's just going to plate solve and realign itself, which is really nice. So now it's seeing if it's centered, and it most likely will not be. <laughs> so it's uncentered. Gonna figure out where it's at. Plate solve, and boom, it should be right in the center of the field of view. And what's really nice is if you want to get more data on this on subsequent nights, you can actually um, go into your images after the night is over and you can basically go to that same exact spot that you're at the night before. So yep, yeah, there we are. You can see everything's looking good. Okay, so with that now done, it's time to start guiding. So I'm just gonna tap on the guide graph, hit the button to start looping images. And I will say this, multi-star guiding is awesome. Uh, the CGX guides really well. So I'm gonna adjust my focus just slightly here. Okay, so that focus looks sharper now. I'm gonna change my exposure to three seconds, brighten that up a bit, and then I'm just going to tap on the guide button and let it do its thing. Oh, that's right, yeah. It'll also prompt you on Celestron mounts to set the speed to 1x before you start guiding. So if you just hit set to 1x, it'll just do it for you. So if I go back here, You'll see now the speed is on 1x. Okay, so now I'll go back to the guiding tab and it's gonna go ahead and do its calibration. All right, so our guiding has calmed down nicely here. You can see that is a really good uh, graph there. So I'm just gonna hit the preview tab and we're gonna go to auto run and tap on the circle at the top right. And I'm gonna uncheck flats here and I'm gonna re-enable lights. It already is going to populate the target, so IC1805. We're going to do a meridian flip, so that's checked. When I'm done, we're going to go to the home position, so I'm going to check that. And shut down the ASIR Pro. There's no point in keeping that cooler on, you know, at 5 in the morning. So I'm going to go ahead and do uh, 180 second exposures. And let's do, I don't know, 100 of these, we'll say. Bin 1, yes, they're light frames, hit OK. The really nice thing about the ASIR Pro is once you've got it going, it'll do the meridian flip for you, it'll recalibrate the guiding if you want it to, it, you just have to go to your mount settings and, and do that after the meridian flip, um, and then when you're done, it will go to the home position and shut itself off. So once you really have those first few steps that I showed you on setting up the CGX, and you're basically connected to it in the app, Controlling it becomes really simple. You can see just how precise the auto guiding is. I mean, that is fantastic right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the play button, and it will say, hey, warning, you're going to uh, shut down and go to the home position. I'll hit confirm. It's going to do an autofocus again, because I, I have that setting enabled that it starts to do an autofocus before each run. And then that's pretty much it. Now I just would like to apologize in advance. I know the film quality is probably not what you're expecting or what you're used to, but it is pretty hard to film that with one person with lighting and having to move the camera around and all that, it is a bit tricky to do. So apologies in advance, but hopefully you were able to obtain the information that you came here for. And that's how to uh, basically use your Celestron Advanced VX slash CGM2 
or your CGX and CGXL with the ZWO ASI Air operating system. So right now I actually have my RASA 8 and my CGX uh, pointed at the Heart Nebula taking image of that. And I have my Red Cat 51 and my Advanced VX also imaging the Heart Nebula. I thought it'd be fun to kind of compare and contrast a monochrome and a color image. So the RASA 8, I have a IDAS NBZ ultra high speed designed for the RASA. That's a, a dual uh, narrow band filter. And then on the Red Cat 51, I have uh, hydrogen alpha, sulfur 2, and oxygen 3 going. So let's check out the results from our, uh, our little run here. this once you get the two systems talking to each other it's really easy to set up night in and night out I can probably do it in about under six minutes depending on if you count the autofocus routine or not and you can see it produces really good results this picture on my desktop here actually I took through the ASI Air Pro um, pretty much everything I've done the last year year and a half has been with it and I don't plan on changing anytime soon it just works really well the last thing I'll say is I'm also very impressed with the Celestron CGX. And I'm not just saying that to blow steam, it's the honest truth. It is a wonderful medium grade mount. The auto guiding performance with the ASI Air Pro is tremendous. You saw those numbers I was, I was getting out there and they're really good. Makes astrophotography really easy, especially if you're using like a, a short focal length system like the RASA or the Red Cat 51. Uh, you can take some really long exposures and get some really amazing results like like I have here That being said, I've also been really impressed with the CGX's performance tracking when you're doing like lunar tracking or tracking the planets Keeps them right in the field of view and just does a tremendous job So I've been very impressed with my CGX so much so that I've actually started to save up for a CGX L I'm working on a a big project it's going to take me a long time probably to see it through to the end but i'm determined to do it so anyway again i hope that you found this video helpful you're able to connect your systems now and get those working and really get more photons into your camera sensor so as always have a great day thanks so much for watching and clear skies